up and tell us again. Ben, I'm not sitting in front of my card. Is that a problem? Oh, this is going to be weird. <laughs> oh, where are the cards? Where you don't cards? you don't mind talking about men of a certain age, do you? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no one's in front of their cards. <laughs> this is like that. Would game. it be easier to move the people or the cards? It's, you got nobody can see the cards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. We're the only ones who can see the we'll, cards. We'll, we'll edit all this. Don't worry. Uh, this is also yeah, not my water. We'll. <laughs> We'll get it on the night. Don't worry. I don't think this is your panel. I think uh, (laughs) this is not my panel. (laughs) Uh, Thank you all for being here. Let's talk. uh, Each of you has created a show with someone who is not necessarily your writing partner, but maybe your writing partner. And some of you don't even have writing partners. So this is really a perfect panel. (laughs) As as Ray pointed out to me last night, it's a bunch of single people forced to talk about partnerships. (laughs) Well, we're the only. Partners here, right? Uh, yeah, and we're not even. I mean, we're not. Yeah. Someone give him. We a hate each other. I mean, right. Exactly. No, I mean, yeah, we were certainly partners, but we wrote a lot together, teamed up for Raymond, and then obviously yeah. the. Well, let's let's start with you guys, um, since you know it's fresh in, in our memories. I feel uh, a little in, uh, intimidated that the moderator looks exactly like you. I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I may, I I could be the child of both of you. Oh wait a minute. <laughs> I just want to point out, I think I got insulted by both of you. <laughs> and again, this is why the cards are so I'm important. <laughs> exactly. uh, Ray and Mike, let's talk about Men of a Certain Age first. And I hope you'll all join us at the Men of a Certain Age screening, which I think follows this. Um, tell us about how this project came together. And, you know, each of you had been working yourselves as writers and as a performer, obviously. Um, how did it become a collaboration? How did that conversation begin? Well, it was it, indeed a conversation. It, we, I was uh, waiting for Lucky Louie to be picked up. What have you heard? <laughs> uh, okay. And, you know, because HBO takes forever to do everything, I had a lot of time. And he... Was going to therapy twice a week <laughs> <laughs> after Raymond ended. Raymond ended, and it seemed like it was going to be great you know, because I've done stand-up for 11 years and then Raymond for nine years. So it was basically 20 years of just working, writing, creating, and all that stuff. And I thought, now I get to have some fun. And then four months later, I was in therapy twice a week. (laughs) So there was just this void of, uh, you know, and I was 40 whatever years old. And uh, so Mike and I had lunch. And first, let me just say that Mike and I have written together previously. Uh, We did stand-up together in New York and our sensibilities were the same. We kind of we, we knew each other and we knew our comedy. And then uh, I brought you on Raymond in right. year three because I knew, uh, I knew how you wrote and I knew we needed somebody like you. And then, and then also A hit when show I, needed, you know. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but I needed somebody like you. And then um, when I, I got a book deal, I... And you know, in the second year, if you have a TV show, they give you a book deal, and uh, uh, and I, That's a- Andy relatable. is excited, very about relatable. That. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get a book deal. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, Emily. So I took Ray. Yeah. You write like a magazine. So I gave Royce a job, help me with the book. Um, so anyway, yeah. So we had collaborated a, a lot, and then both of us, four months after Raymond. We're going through some type of uh, midlife. Uh, I found him in a puddle of tears. Yes. And we tried to make. We were, we were trying to figure out what do we do in our career, what do we do in our life, and, and how do we fake our deaths. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Instead, you made a yes. TV show. Yeah, was, but we, but we really had like, lunch. I we have thought, yeah. Someday, I guess after I pass away, I have I, like, taped all our, we just had a lot of conversations, because we were just trying to figure out what should we do together. Should it be a movie? Should it be, you know? And every time we, 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 just, we start catching up, essentially, and the catching up became <laughs> what the show was about. Right. And so I have all these tapes of us talking about his son and, you know, like some stuff that was happening with his family and, you know, uh, and, and our, our trials and tribulations and being like, just feeling like, God, is it all over, man? Are we done? <laughs> What's going on? And then realizing, I mean, that is what happens when you're in your 40s. Everybody has that conversation with themselves about is, is, has the best already happened or is there more or am I dying right. or what's, you know. <laughs> Right. I don't understand where I am right now, then, and there's not much time left, or is there, or, you know, and then so repeat it, until canceled. 
Right, that's what I was going to say. So we wrote a show about it, and then, and it was a great show. Nobody cared, and uh, people, people and we were even worse off enough. than we started. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Now we're in our fifties, and we got to. Yeah, nobody wants to, to see fifty-year-olds. Yeah. That's enough. No, but but uh, we're kidding. We we it was a great. It was two years, and we loved it, and it was very rewarding. Uh, and it sounds like, and, and again, we'll, we'll talk about this more on the actual uh, Men of a Certain Age panel, but it sounds like the story started to come very naturally out of these conversations, and the show formed in a very organic way out yes. of these. Yeah, we knew, you know, we put a lot of ourselves into the characters. You know, the fact that there were three guys coming at that age state of life from a different angle, we either are those people or know people very much like those people. We and, also uh, didn't know, should we make it a movie or, should we, should, or a TV show? And you at the time had a deal with Paramount. Or, uh, or you no, were getting one. You were to, about yeah. to get a deal with Paramount. And HBO heard about that uh, we wanted to do, oh, I wanted to do a show, and said, Let, we'll sign Mike to a deal. So they snatched you up. So I, and this was scheduled for uh, HBO, actually, originally, uh, with... Um, What's his name? I'm forgetting his name. Chris Albrook. Chris Albrook, yeah. And then Chris Albrook left, and it kind of got lost in there, and then we found a home on TNT. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it worked. Like you say, you got two it seasons. It worked for a while. Yes. For a while. You, you can't I'm back two to two a week, though, with my therapist. I'll tell you right now. Now I know that two seasons is a gift. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I want to talk to uh, Andy and Ray for a moment. Oh, really? Um, yeah, that's a, you guys are. Uh, <laughs> you guys are obviously well known to us as performers and as solo performers. Mostly, I'm well known. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some uh, folks have heard of Ray. I, guess. <laughs> I think eight, nine years on a sitcom, right? Right. <laughs> um, but going into television, I mean, we, we all know television is a very collaborative medium. Uh, it is not going up on a stage and doing stand-up or doing, even doing improv with maybe three other people. Can you guys talk to us a little bit uh, about that transition into a more collaborative medium? Me first? Please. All right. I'm going to toss it to you. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, for me, uh, just real quick. When I started Raymond, it, you know, it's a good question because when I started Raymond, uh, it was hard for me mm -hmm. to get used to people writing for me. And, and I wasn't really in the writer's room in the very beginning. Uh, and it was a weird feeling of I was getting laughs from the stuff someone else wrote, but I was almost, uh, you know, it, it was bittersweet <laughs> because I didn't write it. I had, I had to learn to accept that that this is a joint thing and you can't do, you can, you know, there's, you can't do it by yourself and I, I don't even have that talent to, to write a TV show. And then also in the acting part, they told me, do you want a, an acting coach? Uh, <laughs> and I said, no, well, I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. No, this, you know, they said, well, you know, people are gonna be talking back to you now, you know, it's not, it's not stand-up. Um, it took a while, it took a while, uh, uh, but, I, but I'll tell you what, the first time I got into that writer's room, and the first time I wrote my own script, mm -hmm. I never appreciated the writers more than seeing how frickin' hard it is to, yeah. to, to write that, you know, so I, I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> Take it away. Yeah, I think, because I've done a lot more improvising than I, than I necessarily have done solo performing on stage, so I, I, it, was, it was not quite as foreign to me, but... I definitely did have the experience of the first time we did a thing where we, we asked all the writers to take a segment of the show and, and write it and then we, nobody was going to have seen it at all except for the writer before we did a table read. I'm not sure why, why did we do that? But we, <laughs> this is, we should say, we're talking about uh, Review. Oh yeah. Uh, with Forrest McNeil. Are you guys familiar with the show? Oh. Great show. Statistically, there's no way all the people who just applauded watch yeah. the show. It's, <laughs> but I appreciate it anyway. Oh, I see. <laughs> but so what was that experience like to have everyone kind of bring these things in kind of cold? Yeah, like, it really was great. Neat. It was hilarious. It was it was a risky thing to do, but we just kind of wanted to have like a high energy Friday. Let's just see what everybody <laughs> wrote. And uh, I was just immediately amazed that that cuz everybody had a slightly different take on the voice of the character. Uh, so it ended up being uh, an interesting sort of way to pick and choose tones for, for who this guy is. Sure. Uh, and I was just completely amazed. Because I, cause I th thought I knew. I, I guess I kind of went in thinking, well, at some point I'm going to have to 
uh, go in and rewrite everything. <laughs> but, but no, it was, uh, yeah, it was amazing hearing what everybody brought to it. And how was, uh, and again, we've, uh, we've talked about this on the Nerdist Writers panel in the past, so go check out that episode. But um, That seems right statistically, applause-wise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely accurate. <laughs> you notice Chris Hardwick's not here. <laughs> um, how was that first collaboration on the pilot? Because uh, that you worked with the Blitzes on that, right? Right. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that, if you would, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Well, on the pilot, uh, I co-wrote the pilot with our producer, and then we brought I brought in Jeffrey Blitz to direct it. And Jeffrey Blitz, who uh, he was nominated for an Oscar for that Spelling Bee documentary, Spellbound, and has won an Emmy for directing The Office, and has a feature called Rocket Science, which is really That's amazingly right. great that he wrote and directed. Uh, and I. Yeah. Again, again, Absolutely that's correct. right. But <laughs> sadly, but he, uh, I just thought he would be a great director. I didn't realize the insights he would have into the script on the on the pilot, uh, and it, so, and it was nerve wracking because <laughs> we brought a director on, we're ready to go, and he had all these big thoughts about the script, um, which elevated the script and made it so much better. So when we got picked up, I just said I just need him in the room all the time. Uh, so and he was luckily available to come on board and, and help. Do you think coming from an improv background that you found it easier to kind of do this give and take with a group? I mean, you've worked, obviously. I mean, improv is a kind of very fast writing, right? Yeah. It's writing on the spot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so you think you were more open to the kind of collaboration that TV demands? Yeah, definitely. I think so, yeah. I mean, you know, there's that, obviously, everybody, if you know one thing about improv, it's yes and. Uh, and so our writing process was absolutely that. You know, it was just, we, we very rarely said no, <laughs> which led us to crazy places. We just always said yes. Uh, yeah, right. so I think so. Good. Uh, Emily, uh, Emily is the co-creator of the dearly departed Trophy Wife. Rest in peace, rest in peace, Trophy Rest in wife. peace. All of the actors were put to pasture. <laughs> Sorry to say. Um, can you tell us a little bit about creating that show? You co-created the show. Yes. Um, and tell us a little bit about that process and working with your partner. Yes, I co-created the show with my writing partner, the very talented Sarah Haskins, uh, who is not here this weekend. And coming up with the idea was very easy because it was loosely based on her life. And she uh, had married a man 20-some years her senior and uh, sort of inherited his stepchildren and they had one of their own. And, and uh, we sort of saw through her, you know, we'd, we'd get together and she would talk about her life, that was inevitably where the conversation went, but just the idea of creating a show from the perspective of the so-called trophy wife, but sympathetic to that character, which is how we saw Sarah, who just wanted to be a part of the family. The title trophy wife was intended to be ironic. I don't know if it was <laughs> always received that way. Um, but that was sort of the idea, and then um, I took it and I made it a TV show. No, I, that's not what happened. <laughs> we did it together, but Sarah, Sarah gave very generously to the premise of our show. Well, let me ask about that. I mean, you're using your partner's story, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, how do you find a foothold in that when it's not your story personally? Well, personally, I had no problem at all with it not being my story. I mean, I felt like I was getting the best of both worlds. I didn't have to expose myself and could still be a part of this um, project. Um, I mean, a lot of it, we did actually have a character who was uh, uh, our main character's friend, who I think was a little part, at least the genesis of the idea, was a little part Sarah's sister, a little part me, but she quickly turned into sort of an alcoholic sex maniac. Um, and I haven't had a drink in weeks, so obviously that's not me. Um, but um, outside of sort of being represented on the show, it was just it, so much of it was based on real life that we, we and the writers, we were always just taking stories from real life, and some of them were family stories, and others were, were just you know stories about relationships. So I feel like everybody on probably any, any writing staff, you're contributing a lot based on your real experiences. For sure. And let me ask you just kind of nuts and boltsy, since you do actually work regularly with a writing <laughs> partner. Um, how do you guys work? How do you, uh, you know, physically do the work? Do you break stories together? Do you actually script together? How does it break down? For us, it's funny, and I, I think probably all writing partnerships are different, but yes, we do, um, we like to brainstorm together and outline together and do sort of all those early stages mm -hmm. together. And just personally for us, it works. Is we, when it comes to the writing, we split up and we write in different sections and we'll sort of bring it back together and be checking in with each other constantly. And I think the longer we've written together, the smoother that process has become. Initially, it, we've, we've learned each other's voices well enough that now I think it's become a little more seamless and when we get back together, we can 
it, it's less obvious by page who wrote what, which I think was not the case in the beginning. Um, uh, but yeah, I think we do the, the writing, at least the first draft separately, and then come back and revise and punch up together. Do you guys fight? <laughs> we, um, we are two women, so I feel like we... Um, do you get passive aggressive? We get passive aggressive <laughs> occasionally. We, one of us might pout, and the other will say what's wrong. I mean, we have never <laughs> yelled at each other. Right. Um, but it is, oddly, it's a relationship, yeah. and it's, uh, you know, do we you, have... Do you ever kiss? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's horrible. That's just for a joke, just for a stupid laugh. It's, it's, it's a stupid joke. <laughs> This is why you have Mike, right? <laughs> Punch uh, this stuff up. <laughs> I'm mostly a wrangler. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just. Uh, oh, let's let's move on. <laughs> I, I was gonna press you for an answer, but let's move on. Uh, hello, Carrie. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm you... Yeah, this is such a good panel. I forgot I was on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching it. <laughs> Tell us about all of the, you've had a number of uh, sort of intense collaborations uh, with different people. I mean, from being on staff and working closely with other writers, yeah. you've worked with a partner as well, right? When Am I, I making started. That yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Mm -hmm. For a um, couple years. I have a question for you. This is not a personal question, but it's going to sound you, like it. I, I like personal questions. For, They're actually easier. Well, <laughs> pers personal to me. Um, hot, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. How do you how do you break up with a writing partner? I'm yeah, not. I think I'm not that going. I think that depends entirely on the writing partner. Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, you do it the same way you break up with a boyfriend. Totally. You, you like try to pretend like um, it's the <laughs> it's it's the, that they would be happier without you. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, tell us about uh, Bates Motel, if you would. Um, that's a broad question. <laughs> uh, well, specifically within the context of this panel, um, uh, you know, you you're collaborating. Yeah, you're collaborating on the show with Carlton. Although you wrote the pilot, right? Yeah, it's credited. Well, we we broke the story together. Oh, you did. Yeah. Okay. Well, can you tell us about how that happened? I don't think we've gotten to talk since. Yeah, Bates I mean, um, Carlton. It, it was just, we have just weirdly great chemistry. Like, I met him for lunch to just kind of talk about whether or not, you know, I, I, I was going to do it. And mm -hmm. um, and I also thought he was going to, like, pick someone else anyway. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like WME. I'm like, he's going to pick someone from WME. <laughs> but... Um, but anyway, so I went to the lunch, and I, and, I like, and I, like, showed up, and I, like, vomited up all my emotional ideas. And um, it, we just started working on it, like, at lunch. Like, the first time we met, and it was just, it was, we, we kind of had two parts of it that just went together so well. Um, I was pretty obsessed with the, um, this, this weird, intense mother-son relationship and um, doing a story about dysfunction that was, that, dis that, that could talk about dysfunction in its beautiful aspects. Um, which I know sounds weird, <laughs> but when you're when you are actually in a dysfunctional situation, it's it's sort of like there's every, there's high stakes every day. It's like is dad gonna be passed out on the front porch? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you it's kind of like you're in a foxhole with your family, um, and I and I really and it bonds you to people in such a really kind of deep raw way. And I was fascinated by telling a story about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Carlton, is, you know, is just so great with, with um, he's so great with story and with like moving stuff along and, you know, I mean, I think if I had written the show by myself, it would be um, My So-Called Life with Norma and Norman Bates. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's, he's just lovely. I mean, we've had, we've had a great time. How do things work in the room when you're both there? It's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's really fun. It's um, uh, we, you got you also had a killer staff. We uh, did have a killer staff. I'm gonna tell you that room last year was some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. What makes that for was a, fun a room? raucous fun room? What makes for a fun room? Um, freedom. No, just just total trust. You know, not um, f 
feeling like anything's going to sink you, you know, just everybody's kind of, it's all good, mm -hmm. you know. But I think trust is a huge part of it. Sure. And I, I would assume, you know, that's part of what makes the collaboration work. It is. And I mean, I think we're both, I think we have strengths that are very complementary to each other. Um, and, I, and I would go so far, Carlton would probably kill me for this, but to say we have psychological strengths that are very complementary. I tend to be, um, I tend to live in kind of that anxiety, emotional mucky place, which is like great for writing, not always good for show running. <laughs> and, and um, you know, Carlton's like this like amazing, polished, six foot tall man with a deep voice. And I mean, you know, not to be like, Pavlovian, but it's like sometimes when I'm like, I don't know if it's a good idea, da, da, and he goes, that's a great idea. <laughs> and I'm like, that is a great idea. <laughs> so he, you know, he's just wonderful. I just want to say that I, that I completely relate to that. <laughs> um, we, we have a different relationship than I have with, uh, you know, I wrote with Kevin Beagle this year, yeah. uh, and we were, I guess you could say partners, and, and Ke for Enlisted, right, yeah. yes. Any Enlisted? Um, thank you. Um, How does that check out? Seems about right. All right. <laughs> that's, that's, this is about yeah, that's the demo. Um, but Kevin does the same. Kevin is a I'm a mass of insecurities, and Kevin is the guy who's like that's fucking awesome. And I'm like you're you're right. We're both awesome, you know. And it, and then I think with us two, the dynamic is more. It's di right. You, it goes the opposite way, where you're the mass of insecurities, and because you're that guy, I turn into all right. Fuck it, we're doing it. You know, this is. That's true. Because you be. Because I have the same relationship with my brother, my brother Rich, who uh, he's older than me. But I become the voice of reason when he comes to me. Raymond, what about this? And right, also, I'm right. the sane one. Right. So, so it, it's, right. it's as long as you have someone who's yes. saner than you. Every <laughs> Frazier needs a Niles. That's the way it works. Absolutely. Was this your experience as well, Emily? I don't know that. It, I, I'm, I'm like, well, I wouldn't be the insane one. <laughs> Maybe I would be. She's not um, here. You can call her the insane yeah, one. Yeah, Sarah's nuts. Um, no, uh, I do think that, I don't know if one of us is deeply insecure or what the issues are, but I do think it's, it's exactly what Carrie said. You have strengths that complement each other, and, and it's so, that's so important. But I absolutely think it can be so um, sort of isolating, writing and particularly show running, and, and um, I think just having that other person to either tell you you're crazy, tell you you're not crazy, whatever it is, just so you, you feel like, okay, I'm not doing this all in my own head. That's mm -hmm. It's hugely helpful. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to make sure we get questions from you guys. Uh, is, is there an audience mic? No? Uh, no. That's right. They uh, could share with me and Ray. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's what we'll do. Uh, if you have a question, if, yeah. yeah. Well, if you, well, we're recording, you guys. Come on. We're professionals. Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand, and we'll I will call it. on you. We'll repeat and, the question. Yes, we'll repeat the question for the podcast. Uh, please remember to keep your questions short. Uh, because I assume we'll have a lot of them. This is a killer panel. And um, please remember that questions begin with a W or an H, not with an I. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yes. Uh, and stand you guys up just when got you scolded. <laughs> Can you describe an aha moment in which you one, came maybe. up with something with your partner? <laughs> This, when Sarah and I, aha, I, feel, I felt like we were watching Oprah. It wasn't that kind of aha. <laughs> but when, um, actually, our, when we ver the very first time we, when we started collaborating, we went out to dinner. Sarah had just moved out to L.A. I was writing for hour-long dramas at the time. And each of us wanted to write a screenplay. And we were in the early stages, but separately. But about females in high school, uh, we had sort of similar ideas and sort of this aha moment. We both had full-time jobs at the time, and the aha moment was like, oh my god, if we do this together, we can, we'll actually get it done. You'll have somebody <laughs> you're responsible to, because I think we both knew, we, you, you, you're done with work, you just want to go to sleep, and, and it really worked. It was an exhausting year, but I think having that person that you were accountable towards, it helped us finish the script, and that sort of started our career as writing partners. For sure, oh, that's cool. I have, this may be a sort of a weird aha moment, but in, in addition to uh, uh, working with Jeffrey Blitz, I'm all, we're also working with Jeffrey Blitz's brother, Andy, who I went to high school with and have done, we were doing comedy together in high school. And he was on, uh, on our writing staff and there was one day in the first, maybe the first day, uh, he said, let's make a show that wins awards. Now I don't know, 
I don't think we're gonna. Man, I don't know that we're gonna win awards, or that we, any of us were on totally the same page about what that meant. But I think what it meant to us was like, let's not just make a show that that uh, accomplishes sort of the basics of of what it needs to comedically. Let's try our best. <laughs> 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 and that was, I think, an important thing to put out there and for everybody to sort of nod to and, and, and uh, agree to. I mean, there is something to be said. All of you guys have worked on ambitious shows, and it's very easy when you are in the TV system to not make an ambitious show. I, I would assume your collaborators help you to become more ambitious. Yeah. We didn't have many aha moments. We had a, a lot of uh-oh moments. <laughs> We had, uh, up the season. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh-oh, Andre Brower's losing weight. Yeah, Remember? Yeah. We had, because we wrote Andre as this uh, a bit overweight and diabetic, and then in year two, he said, I'm, I'm <laughs> in the off season, he goes, I'm riding my bike across country, Andre <laughs> Brower. And he did. He rode a bike from, where did he go? From, uh, yeah, like, I, I, I don't know if he made it, you know, I think it's a, yeah, to, I, I forgot how it was. He said across the country. He got to like Kentucky or somewhere, <laughs> and he got chafed or something, and he, yeah. That's right. Seriously, now I remember. He had a, he had That's a, right. Yeah, yeah. But, but he, he, but he dropped some weight. And became then. a vegan, and, <laughs> yeah. and like just, I don't. He went to the doctor, and his cholesterol was crazy over the top. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so yeah, we're like that. It goes. You're not supposed to be. You're the guy who's supposed to be. You know overweight and the guys make fun of you for that and then it's something you're battling and he's like fuck you I would like to be healthy if that's all right. <laughs> so right around it yeah. so what so what did you guys do how do you write around it? I mean well, actor we collaboration is a whole so they didn't uh, <laughs> yeah I was in that season. <laughs> Um, no, we uh, we did write to it a little bit. I mean, he, we his health wasn't so much an issue in the second season mm -hmm. anyway. Right, right, right. We had but, other stories to go to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, funny when he came in. When originally we wrote that scene, the, the character for Wendell Pierce. So, I mean, uh, you yeah, know Wendell Pierce, right. yeah. And we met with him, and he wanted to do it, but then uh, the show Treme came mm -hmm. up. Yeah. So somebody pitched Andre Bauer, and we just remember Andre Bauer bringing from Homicide and this guy who's in <laughs> command and, and all that. And his agent, what did his agent say? Well, you know, agents are always trying to get you the job, and so his agent was like... Oh, we, we told him, we, we told him this, this character, is, he's let himself go a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this is like, you know, it's written into the script. He's very overweight, he's battling, you know, diabetes. And this is, well, he's let himself go a little bit. <laughs> 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 right, that's some good agenting. <laughs> By the um, way, have you seen him now? He's lost. He looks amazing. Right. He's back to homicide. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's a cop again. Uh, other questions? Yes, right here. Stand up, please. Yeah, how do you, how do you handle a giving your show a unified voice? Uh, and also, how does the hierarchy of the room work? Anyone who wants to answer. Uh, well, I had the most money in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you have a showrunner. You have a showrunner. You you know the, the who makes the final decision, but you try to make it as collaborative as possible. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for us, it was we. He would sit at one end, and I would sit at the other. And I think I I would take the you know I think the dynamic was a lot of discussion, discussion, discussion. Okay, are we agreed? Excellent. Let's and then wait a minute. <laughs> and then three hours. Wait a of, minute. Uh, I'm not he, taking he, my shirt off in that scene. <laughs> You gotta he give me he looks at everything. <laughs> I gotta take my shirt off. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we, I, you know, I can't speak for everybody here, but I think it's probably a general principle that you know you don't go forward unless um, you're in yeah, agreement. I, so I, look, I can, look, there's someone running the show, but if if everybody on board is saying this is not the way to go, uh, in yeah. our room at least, right, uh, uh, we would figure it out. In, on, I, yeah. I think from Raymond, we took you know Phil wrote, ran in a very like best idea wins kind of a thing. And so if someone's really making a giant like pitch for something that everyone has agreed on that is like maybe slowing everybody down because one person's not on board, you got to take the time to hear that person if you have the time. Phil Rosenthal, <laughs> who ran uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, he had a way of dealing with me. When, whenever something came up that I didn't agree with, you know, because I was in the writer's room and I would say, uh, wait, Phil, Phil, my character, he would never do that. <laughs> And Phil would say, that's why you do it. Because he would never do it. It becomes good. So I, I could never that's argue what's funny. a point. I could never argue. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> anything he said, I could do, how to do, because if, if he would do it, then let's do it. If he wouldn't do it, then that's why you do it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, when, then you would say, well, what if I did this? Oh, your character would never do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Carrie, tell us about having the authorial voice uh, on Bates, for example. Uh, well, I I tried. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you may. This may surprise you. I'm not naturally authoritative. Um, so I I, I kind of just like to start the room with listening to everybody and kind of like hearing everything, making supporting. I guess mm -hmm. is the word. And then and then it comes to that sort of awkward time where I have to <laughs> where you have to start distilling a little bit and go. Okay, well. I think maybe we should push it this way. Yeah. And, and generally people are so um, uh, sensitive to that that they, they just get on the train right, you know, right away. It's not like they go, well, no, fuck you. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, so it's, it works pretty well. But I, I just try to be really supportive and um, respectful. Do I you think respect is hugely important in a room. Absolutely. Do you do a lot of rewriting? I do. Mm -hmm. And is that, you think, where, you By know... trade. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the, the final voice of the show has to come through, and the consistent voice of the show, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, I mean, Carlton and I go through all the scripts um, together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, do, I do do a lot of rewriting. I mean, I think that the, that the show, because it's so... It's so intimate and strange. It's sort of... It's something that it kind of needs, like, a single... Mm. A single emotional voice to push it through. So yeah. How many on the staff? How many writers? Uh, last year we had um, three people. Oh, that's it was a, a very small staff. Oh. Yeah. Three plus you and Carlton. Plus me and Carlton. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's very yeah. small. Yeah. Uh, and how many episodes? Ten. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Emily, I'm it's sort of the same question, although because you work consistently with a partner, do you think you can define that voice that the two of you create? I mean, you say you can't tell really page for page anymore what each of you has written. What is the voice that is the combination of you two sound like? Well, I do think we bring different things to the table. You know, Sarah's a performer, and I think always sort of approaches, or at least in the beginning, approached our scripts from that perspective. And I started always, you know, as a writer. And so it would just, we would just sort of be thinking about things a little bit differently. Um, I do think now, just having written together, it, it's. Um, one thing we've just gotten into through like Trophy Wife, but also our script Booksmart, which is in development right now, but we've, we've found ourselves just naturally, we write women characters well, and I think naturally, and I think that we've um, started not uh, consciously, but writing sort of uh, smart, strong female w characters and, and maybe flipping certain stereotypes on their head, and that's sort of something that we've gravitated towards, but if we had a voice, I think, I think it's in that, in that vein of, of strong female characters. Uh, Andy, the same question. What is, what is the Andy Daly voice that we can see in review, and you know, how is it balanced by the collaboration? Uh, yeah, well, again, I think uh, because we did sort of settle on the voice of this character together as a room, um, I don't know. It's 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 largely me. Whoa, wait, what happened? Got it. It's a <laughs> it's um, I mean, it's very much sort of a, a voice, a character voice that I've done before, of like a, a smart sort of repressed, uh, passive aggressive weirdo. Oh. Can you, can you, uh, <laughs> 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 put my name on it. <laughs> He actually likes me. Do you want to change anything you said about him? <laughs> no. All right. Where is he? He's got something to do? Where is he going? Where... He has four shows on the air. Oh, he has okay. something to do. Right. Take it uh, easy. Anyway. <laughs> you're, you're stuck with me all day. This is, by the way, this is, this is our dynamic, so I see the, you know. Yeah, the yeah, fact I'm moving I, in. <laughs> it feels good. Andrew, I apologize. I was thankful for that intrusion, because I, I kind of didn't have an answer to your question at all. I was, I was just floundering. I was just uh, <laughs> spinning my wheels until somebody came in with a joke <laughs> from another room, if necessary. More, more importantly, 
What's that? Are you watching uh, Gang of Thrones right now? Uh, Game of Thorns? Yes. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it called Game of Thorns? I thought it was Gang of Thrones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. I am watching All it. All right, we have time for one more question, then I'll get to that. No, you're in the front. Who's in the back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> How do you deal with writers? How do we block? deal with writers? <laughs> I know I should have heard you. <laughs> no, um, you uh, personally, I try to be as kind to myself as I can. In other words, I hate myself. <laughs> That's where you get writer's block a lot, is like everything I'm doing is shit. So then I try, I literally, I, I'll, I'll like be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, look at these three words here, pretty <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> I'd say it's time to watch eight episodes of The Sopranos, and then I, you know, give myself a break and move on. Try to get out. Try to get out on a good note. Yeah, I play Candy Crush. That's what I do. Yeah. Well, that's why I collaborate. I like to yeah. collaborate because uh, me, me by myself. I'm trying to write a screenplay now, and it's. It's crazy torture. Yeah, I just sit in the room all day and go home. You know, my wife says, "When are you coming home?" I'm writing, and I'm not writing. You know, yeah. yeah. I heard somebody say that if you're like writing a screenplay and you take four months off from it, that's that was all part of the process of writing the screenplay, and you should think that to yourself that whole four months. Sure. This is part of it, yeah. which is really, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but if it helps get you back to it, sure. why not? Going to Vegas is part of it. It's all part yeah, of it. Yeah. It could not have been done without that trip to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you, when a TV show is rolling, I mean, that's, that's a moving train. Do you, you guys don't have time for writer's block. Yeah. No, that's really, yeah, I think have a deadline is a good way to avoid writer's block. Yeah, um, yeah I think that's right. And, and you know, we had a, a big writer's room. You've got enough smart people. Somebody's going to come up with an idea. How prepared, <laughs> like how ahead of the game are you in shows? We started out for us pretty ahead of the game because you have pre-production, you get sort right. of ahead. If you so you have a couple of scripts already. Yeah, yeah, we had a few, but it, you know, the longer it goes on, the more behind you get. I think right. we by the end you feel like you're limping to the finish. But on a new show, there's the process of figuring out the show. Right, too, exactly. Take time. But yeah. that's one thing we learned from Phil Rosenthal was we had about ten scripts ready to go wow. when not ready to go, but, but yeah. rough first drafts when Raymond's would start. So we'd never. That's great really got to that, it's the, you know, it's midnight the night before and we gotta come up with it, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's wrap up by asking, what are you guys watching on television? What are you enjoying? What are you talking with your rooms about, with your spouses about, with your friends about? Uh, Carrie, starting with you. No, <laughs> don't start with me. Starting with <laughs> I am the worst. At Do you not have time to watch television? I, I, I have three kids and, and I run a show. <laughs> so it's, yeah. You know, it's, I don't, I mean, uh, are your, is your room talking about other shows? Yeah, I just pretend like I know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. Totally fair. Do your kids watch television? Um, not so much, no. <laughs> We're wow. a little weird. You just, you just don't want to give an answer. No. You? You just don't want to, <laughs> this yeah. is not like a gotcha well, that's my. By the way, my wife's favorite show is your show. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. It's a lot of people yeah. favorite show. Emily, what are you watching on television? I also, it was a busy year. I was not watching a lot for a long time. <laughs> um, I am watching Game of Thrones. Uh, I just started watching Silicon Valley. Obviously, my HBO Go is open. Um, but no, I've been, I think that show's hilarious. I'm really enjoying it. I'm look for, looking forward to watching Enlisted because it was so well received. <laughs> and I think Mike will say Trophy Wife. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I can imagine. Andy. You know, I, uh, just a couple notes about that show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yes, Trophy Wife, absolutely, and, and Review for that matter. And um, I was, a, you know, proprietor of a mid-season show that got canceled. I had some time uh, to, so, you know, The Americans I was watching, and, um, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I think, is fantastic, and Parks and Rec, always, yep. you know. That's um, a lot of comedy writers don't tend to watch comedies, but it sounds like you watch a lot of them. I... I do love to watch comedies, and I think I watch more because I'm a comedy writer. Like, I think sometimes I'm like, well, I have to check this out and see what's happening. But I, you know, I think the thing that I'm surprised the most is I used to love my multicams. I still have not gotten back into the multicam thing, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I can't figure out why that is. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they're funny. There's, there's very good ones, but I still like the single cams better, personally. But America doesn't. <laughs> uh, Ray, then, Andy. 
Uh, I'm watching Fargo. I'm actually into Fargo, yeah. I got into that. Um, Louie, I watch Louie. FX is a sponsor here. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a cool little show called Parenthood. <laughs> Come on, you couldn't mention parent. One of those. No, but everybody's mentioned everybody's show here. I, I actually do watch Parenthood. <laughs> you were you were I have right a bad memory. Yes. Why were you? Was no, I just it? forgot I watched it. I didn't oh, watch it. Okay. Did you, oh, I you thought you meant you had a bad memory of Parenthood because you were you. Yeah, you remember you, you were I on it, right? <laughs> yeah, were, no. But you were a writer on Parenthood. I was a writer on yes, Parenthood. Yes. yes. But yeah, and then I watch reality. With my, I, my kids, we share time watching reality. Uh, the American Idol. I'm a big nerd when it comes to that. I not only watch American Idol. I'm not kidding. When it was on, I used to get the DVD shipped to me of Canadian Idol. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I I did. I was I was in Toronto for a couple of weeks. I got hooked on Canadian Idol. I was doing a couple of weeks. I, I was got there for. Idol. Yeah, well, that should be a reality show. I got hooked on Canadian Idol. Let me explain something. I was doing Welcome to Mooseport, so I had a, I had a, uh, have another outlet. You know, I had to say, well, at least I'm not on this, this. No, <laughs> but uh, they started, they would DVD me, oh they would ship me the shows, and then uh, I don't think they do them anymore. Yeah. Take it away, Andy. Andy, what are you watching? I'm watching Game of Thrones and. Uh, <laughs> And Game, of Game of Fong. Game would of be Fongs. a good show. Yeah. <laughs> that I would watch. <laughs> yeah, that's a challenging game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Louie, and we just, my wife and I just started binging on Orphan Black. We're watching uh, that. Uh, that's great. That's a good show, right? And that's it, it except for uh, the shows of everybody on this panel. Yeah, sure, of course, naturally. <laughs> Please give a big round of applause to all of our panelists. Thank Mike Royce, Troy Romano, Andy Daly, Emily Halpern, Carrie Aaron. Thank you all for coming out.